so special to bring somebody on that's shown us love from day one. All of you shown us a ton of love. We did run a contest, and the 100th subscriber was going to come on. He was actually going to get to pick the topic. That one's Mr. Jeff Bright. Jeff, glad to have you here today, brother. Glad to be here, man. Um, Jeff, known Jeff for several, several years. Uh, went to school with Jeff. Great guy. He's got a great topic today, by the way, that we are, we are all excited about. And um, I can't say enough good things about the love that you guys have shown us so far. You know what I mean, Bradley? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, it's great. It's, it's overwhelming. It's I couldn't believe. I, I knew we, we had an outlet that I think a lot of people wanted to get into, but we never expected this much. Um, we, didn't, we didn't expect, you know, three guys just sitting around bullshitting, drinking beer, talking about movies that people would actually want to watch that or, you know, because that's what they do themselves. So I guess they kind of feel relatable. You and, know? and, um, and Jeff's just another testament to that, man. Just, you know, like he's shared our stuff, liked our stuff, promoted the channel. We can't thank him enough. We brought him on today. We've eaten wings. We've, you know, shot the shit. <laughs> we've drank some beer. That's what we do here. Yeah. Um, As a, right now he was our, uh, of course, 100 subscriber. And that was what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. As of right now, we're sitting at 215 subscribers. See, that's, that's great. That's good right. stuff. We're, uh, we're going on a month. No, <laughs> this this coming week is one month. Monday or Tuesday is a month, right? Yeah. So, no, a week from Monday. Is a week from Monday. The twenty the end of the month will be one month because we started the first of the month. Okay. Yeah, that is true. So, yeah. So, yeah. We're week three with this. That's that's insane. And I can't thank you guys enough. Yeah, it's all, it's all on you. We yeah. just do this for, you know. We're doing this anyway, so yeah. we figured with yeah. uh, that's basically what this is. Um, and having help anywhere from you know Jeff to, to Danny, um, Lori, Carrie, Misty, just a lot of people has helped us out. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start this thing off. I think I'm going to let Bradley lead us off on this one, um, and then we're probably going to go into Jeff. Uh, if that sounds good with you guys, let's, let's do let's a actually, rotation. I would, say, I would okay. say let's actually start with Jeff. I mean, he's the contest winner. Let him. Or we could say Jeff for last yeah, if you want to. Let him. Right, let's let Jeff lead us off. Uh, I guess the topic that I chose for the for the contest was top sports movies of all time. We're gonna do it in a Rushmore format, right. so you pick four. So, so. yeah, before and uh, the movies that I chose are all true true stories, like based on true stories and stuff like that, because everybody can kind of relate to the struggles and stuff. But uh, number one, uh, Prefontaine. It's about the greatest distance runner ever in American history. Not, not a movie that everybody's seen because it, it was an $8 million budget and it only did about 500000 at the box office. But it's, uh, it's, it's still a great, it's still a great film about a, about a great American runner. And, uh, you said Jared Leto was in it, correct? Jared Leto, uh, Arlie Army plays Bill Bowerman. Gunny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gunny. He, I mean, he plays uh, Bill Bowerman, who is the legendary track coach at Oregon and also the coach of the USA national team. And, and uh, at that time, Oregon was the place to go if you were a distance runner. And, uh, you know, Prefontaine, he just, he broke all the rules. He went against everything that a runner would go against, you know, and he made it work for him. And uh, just started the whole the whole running boom. You know, he was the first endorsed Nike athlete, so. What was Pretty that you were telling us about the statue? Uh, well, Phil Knight, you know, who, who is the founder of Nike, he was, he was a walk-on at, uh, Oregon on their cross country and track and field team, and him and Bill Bowerman started, you know, Nike. It was their shoe, their design. That's awesome. I um, didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> Previous to that, everybody had worn like a a solid toe over the end of their running shoe, and it was actually Bill Bowerman's idea to split the toe like a. Uh, a Cortez, the Nike Cortez yep. is basically the first Nike running shoe. You split the toe and then and then sew it in. But he's the he's he's the only only Nike athlete that's ever had a statue dedicated to him. That's awesome. We're talking about Michael Jordan, yeah, Bo Jackson. You're, you're put up over Jordan. King Griffey Jr. <laughs> he he uh, 
at the Munich Olympics, he, he led, you know, until the very, the very last minute of the race, he led and was passed by the more seasoned, the more mm -hmm. seasoned runners. He had another shot at gold on the two mile and, uh, you know, the Palestinian Liberation Organization or whatever came over there and uh, took all the Israeli athletes hostage. I remember that. They made a movie about it. Yes, you know, I remember so, that. Yes. So he didn't get a chance, you know, because they were like done with it. So he didn't get a chance to, to run again. And unfortunately, before the next Olympics, you know, he, uh, he dies in a car wreck. Yeah. Hmm. He's, he's, he, people don't know how much he did for running as a sport, but he's, he's an American icon. He, he changed track as a, you know. How many people at home right now watching this or when they do view it on YouTube, it's like, Google? They're going to, they're going to, <laughs> I mean, I don't you said Jared. Me now. I, I, mean, you. I hate to say it this way, you said Jared Leto, so everybody's going to look it up since he's such a big name now. Right, right. Yeah. He did, a, he did a great job, a great job in the movie. Capturing, capturing just the whole vibe and everything. Yeah. Um, so that's your number one. What you got for your number two? Well, that, that, that would actually be my number four. That's your number four. Oh, he's, yeah. going, he's going like, Woo! he's going from the bottom up, so it's going to get, I want to know what gets out. better. Hell, bro. Damn, I'm all in, bro. Let's do this. Um, Damn. Damn. Next, I wanted, I wanted to go with a, with a boxing movie just because it used to be, you know, the, the Biggest sport in the United States. I mean, in the in the world, everybody people, yeah. people spend millions to yeah. go to a, it, one boxing match a year. Yeah. You know, everybody knew who the heavyweight championship yeah. champion of the world was, and you know they would sit around their radios. Yep. You know, all over Dempsey, Sunny Listen. Yeah, it, it didn't matter like that your economic background or whatever. Right. I mean, from from the richest to the poorest, everybody knew who that was. So, uh, for number three, I went with Cinderella Man. Ron That's Howard. a really good movie. A, yeah. Yeah. Ron Howard directed it. Uh, Russell Crowe. Like Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. Renee Zellweger, uh, Paul Giamatti, and he actually won the uh, Best Supporting Actor mm -hmm. from the Academy Award Best Supporting Actor for That's his awesome. role well, Paul as the tra a trainer and corner man, you know. So that that's a great movie. There's a, there's a part where he tells Russell Crowe, he's like, hey, you got to, you know, you got to stop uh, some of those lifts. You know, you got to, Miss some of them. He's like, "Do you see me getting by my head?" <laughs> <laughs> he's stopping them. Yeah, he's, he, he's stopping them. He's stopping every one of them. Like, right in, in the wrong way, but he's stopping them. <laughs> but to me, that to me, that's a great movie. Uh, any, any anybody can, you know, kind of grab on to something in that. Oh and, yeah, and equate it with their real life or whatever. No doubt. And then uh, that was a good one. Oh yeah, this definitely the cast was. You know Jethro from the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. Everybody, everybody knows that. Dr. You know, Bader. Max Max Bear Jr. He plays a goofy. He's like the big, lovable, strong, goofy guy on, on the Beverly Hillbillies. His daddy was one of Max Bear was one of the most feared men in the world. I mean, he, you know, he was he was a monster in the ring, and that's who Jim Braddock beat. You know, for the championship of the world. So. It's a great film. That's awesome. Great film. I agree. That is that is a good one. Number number two for me is uh, remember the Titans. Yep, another it's, great one. It's a football movie. It's it's a Disney movie. Uh, oh hell, the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the our overlord supreme commander Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you know, and it it's a movie, but a, a movie. To me, it's kind of like music. Uh, music can bring people together. You know, a movie can kind of bring people together. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, and I, I think that that movie did that. It won several NAACP awards. You know, best actor for Denzel Washington. You know, best motion picture. So it, you know, it wasn't super critically acclaimed, but it. Did excellent at the box office. Well, as a testament here in town, I mean, our high, when our high schools all merged, they actually took the colors and the actual right. mascot right. of the Titans to exactly. show the, the what that impact, that history right. had. Gad City, yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah, how they could all come together. And they took the colors and the right. mascot and everything. Is, That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That's a great. That's, a, that's an excellent choice. He's getting me. I love. That's he's getting me hopped up over yeah. here, bro. I want to be over there watching this. I don't even want to be on the panel, man. The I, I'm that. scared my choices aren't going to look up. Oh, no, shit. Bro, like, hey, what's so bad is all his movies are real. Yeah, mine are going to be like, uh. Mine are going to be like, oh, oh, shit. You're the, you know. Uh, he's killing it, bro. For, for me, uh, you know, I have kids that, you know, they're teenagers and stuff, but remember, remember the Titans for them is kind of like Forrest Gump for me. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen Forrest Gump 200 times. Right. And it's one of those movies, if I'm flipping through the channels, just on, on regular satellite you TV, stop. and it Forrest Gump's on there, and it's 45 minutes into it, then I'm probably going to spend the next two hours watching Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and, right. and it's the same way with Remember the Titans. If it, you know, if you're flipping through and you see that it's on, you know, you're, watch it. you're, you're locked in. So yeah, I agree with you, but that's a great choice. To me, that makes it a great movie. Great choice. And uh, my number one choice just because it's super graphic and real, is Friday Night Lights. Yeah, great movie. It's super cast. I mean, if they tried to make that movie now with where that cast is went, yeah. uh, financially it wouldn't even be possible. I don't think you know, so either. All those guys have went on to bigger and better things, but it just... It's, it's, to me, it's the most real. Definitely. Especially in towns. That worship high school football is the most real. Growing up in the South. A Tal Alabama. A Tal Alabama. Alabama. Gaz, Gaz in Alabama, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's a normal Friday night in Edwall County, Alabama. Very, yeah. Yeah. People who may see this all over the world, you probably wouldn't understand, but if you watch that movie, you would understand very High school quickly. football is more important than college or pro will ever be if you live in a small if you town. Small towns. That have schools that are constantly known for. You know, attempts at perfection are known for right. titles or anything. Right. right. He is 100 percent correct. Uh, September 11th, mm-hmm. the, when the terrorist attacks happened, you know, uh, the whole the United States was in shock. You know, when it was in set, you know, it's September the 11th. I mean, that's the height of football. Football. They just got some. You know, money. and uh, nobody. Nobody knows what's going to happen. They don't know if the games are going to be played, you know, because they're worried about... Everybody's in uh, fear. You know, time. everybody's in fear to gather, you know, together and, and watch one of their favorite pastimes. And uh, Bill Curry, you know, the former Alabama coach and stuff, mm-hmm. he was working with ESPN at the time, and they actually stopped. You know, they were on their way to South Carolina, I think, to do a game, mm-hmm. and they stopped in... Uh, a towel at a, just a, you know at a gas station, and uh, the clerk, you know, he he was asking if you know are y'all going to play the games? Are they going to be televised and all this stuff? And you know, Curry, he's not sure, and he gets a phone call right then, you know, and it's ESPN, and they're like, hey, don't even go, you know, the game's been the game's been canceled. So he turns and he tells the clerk, he's like, hey, there's not going to you know there's not going to be a game. This, this weekend on ESPN. You know, they've canceled it. And the clerk, who I don't know who it is, this is, this is Bill Curry's words, but yeah. the clerk looked at him and he said, well, in Atala, Alabama, on Friday night, we're going to play football. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, awesome. that's, that's the South on Friday awesome, night. Dude. Because it means something to us. Yeah, that's you know? awesome, that, dude. That's your 15 minutes of glory. You right. know, that's I mean, awesome, bro. That's, that's awesome. just a gas station clerk, you know, and he's like... It, Whatever, whatever comes, whatever you know, we've been waiting all off season for this. And I can it, tell it you, that one was looked very legit right, in two thousand one. Right. right, it bring it brings us together. Cadillac was playing then, wasn't he? That's, he what, just that's what we're gonna do. Okay. You know, we're gonna play. We're gonna we're gonna play the game. It reminds me, just the way that movie goes. If you played high school sports, right. you can really you can relate to you it. Feel it. Uh, and I'm I'm probably guilty of this. Some I push my kids. You know, I push them to. To perfection and stuff, which Tim McGraw's character, you know, he did he did in that movie, and it's just it's so raw. That's the stuff I like about the movie: showing Tim it's McGraw's real. character, like right, the abusive real. father, right. um, who he never could get to glory, so he had to push his son to glory. Right. You also have the the kid that had all the talent in the world, and then he didn't want to leave his mother because his mother was sick, and he right. felt like he had to stay and okay. take care of her. And then it's the, real. The, the kid that has all the talent. You can prepare, you can do the weights, you can do everything you want to do, and it just takes one freak accident, and mm-hmm. every your whole identity 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your whole identity is gone. It's ripped from you. That's, that's like a Derek Nix, yep. former Etowah great, you know, mm-hmm. brother of Tyrone Nix, one yard short of being the all-time leading rusher at Southern Mississippi. Mm-hmm. You know, after three years, he one yard yeah. away from being an all-time leading rusher. And then he had a freak accident with his kidneys. Well, high ankle sprain. Yeah. The high ankle sprain. You know, you trust your trainers. You trust those medical professionals. They put him on something for the inflammation and stuff like that. Yep. That affected his kidneys. Yep. You know, it's a freak. A freak accident. You Nobody know, you even knew. Yeah, you don't expect that to happen at all. And they're like, hey, you know, if you get hit there, it's over for yeah, you. Yeah, done. You know, so... Yeah. You have to step away from the game, much like Booby Miles had to do. And there's yeah. zero doubt Derek would be in, in the NFL oh, yeah. as a powerful oh. back back then. Well, Ty, you know, his brother Tyrone was the at one time was the youngest defensive coordinator in the SEC. Yes, absolutely. I mean, and he, you know, thank right, God Derek's still coaching. We're still at Ole Miss right, coaching. Right. Right. Yeah, right, I mean, right Same down the road. Year. I mean, the, the boys was knocking heads for a long time. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. But Man, you've had some unbelievable. It, well, how do we follow this up? Do you want to follow him or do you want to go counter? <laughs> it I'll tie, it ties it. into uh, Jason Isbell. I don't mm-hmm. know if, if y'all are uh, fans of Jason Isbell's music or whatever, but he has a song called Speed Trap Town. And uh, he says, uh, and it, you know, he's talking about sneaking a bottle up to the bleachers, you know, when he was watching a football game on a Thursday night, you know. And uh, he says, these 5A bastards run a shallow cross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a boy's last dream and a man's first loss. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, I've been there before. When it, when it was time to take it off and, you know, that was your last dream as a kid when you don't have a lot of responsibility and stuff and then Boom, they're hitting you over the head. Right after that, you take the pads off and you got That's a few it. months to graduation and real life hits you in the head. That's know, it. So. That's great, man. This dude's I don't, good, I don't, luck, good luck, Good luck, Peeves. Your next uh, line, good luck. luck. <laughs> I'm going to give a clap to that. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, man. He laid, yeah, he yeah, laid yeah. it out. That was fucking amazing. Uh, I feel like they got really emotional. Like, <laughs> dude, he laid it. I mean, dude, let's do it. I mean, First of all, before we even start, let's yeah. talk for a second. Uh, all true stories. Yeah. All real stuff. Uh, you could feel the passion in his voice. Uh, is this the damn Jeff Bright hour? I mean, yeah. seriously, this is uh, it's amazing. Like I'm. I think the three of us kind of just want to walk off and let him <laughs> yeah, control the yeah. show, like, and, and, get, and let him pick this mic up and go. Whoop. Yeah, <laughs> drop it. Because I can promise you, mine's not going to be as no. intense. Or as, I can promise mine's going to be like. Yeah. A or maybe a hundred of that. That's great. I mean, yeah, let's yeah, we're gonna roll with that. Y'all, so, y'all made it easy though. Yeah, uh, but hey, brother, man, hey, brother. Man, we do, we're doing, doing this, this is your show, man. Yeah. Tonight yeah, is your show. It. And the thing about it is is we're doing what we do, what you do. I don't you're not an alcoholic, but <laughs> drink beers and hang out with your buddies. You well, know what I'm saying? Oh speaking speaking of buddies. Oh yeah, you're hanging out with alcoholics now. Yeah. Well, Stevie Mac right Stevie Mac from Sardis. Uh, he's here with us tonight, which by the way, I hadn't seen him in years. Great guy. So glad you're here, Stevie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peeps, uh, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. Yeah, uh, I can promise you, uh, sports movies are not my strongest suit. They're not as bad as romantic comedies when it comes to me. Uh, oh, you love them rom coms, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, to follow that up is damn like that. That's, <laughs> that's rough. But um, let's roll, man. We might be doing good having to go behind Peeves now yeah. because he has all that. Yeah. <laughs> My number one, and once again, it's grown up in the South. It's grown up in the football culture, but it's not you know as serious as Friday Night Lights. It is Varsity Blues because I think it captures exactly what football life is like, but with the comedy side of you know what an actual high school life is like mm-hmm. at that time. And they're still in the cars and Yeah. You know. And getting away with everything because they're all of a because sudden Because they are local celebrities. Yeah, they're all of a sudden local celebrities. Like he goes in there and buys to buy water and all of a sudden the clerk's like, Nope, here you deserve this and gives him a six pack of beer. Right. Um, um so that would be my number one. Uh my number two would be the wrestler. 
Um, God, it's a good movie, man. Uh, Mickey Rourke's best uh, role ever. Right? Movie, Mickey man. Rourke, Whoa, he man. fucking Whoa. he murders that role. Uh, Darren Aronofsky, or if I'm oh. butchering your name, then I'm sorry. Darren Aronofsky. How do you say Darren Aronofsky, or how do you say his name? It's Aronofsky, I think. Okay. But um, that movie, it, it hit me in a lot of ways because I grew up on professional wrestling and all of that, and. You know, just to watch this dude hit rock bottom, start climbing back his way back up, and then realize I can't really make it in the business now without performance enhancement drugs. And which is real. Yeah, that's real in wrestling. Um, and it's even got a shout out to one of my probably favorite independent wrestlers of all time, Necro Butcher. Which you know, <laughs> way to go me for knowing uh, independent wrestlers. Um, yeah, you ring along. No, that. Like, or New Japan. Or yeah, that's like New Japan. Uh, but um, number three, uh, God, I'm following him up with it. <laughs> what about the, the, back to the wrestler? Yeah. You slid that one in on us because that's, that's, that's great, great right there. But I mean, that's Marissa Tomei in all her glory. Yeah. I mean, it, it, everything it, it, Marissa Tomei it, is yeah. in all her glory. Like, I'm sorry, I'm in love that's with not, her. That's like. not, that, <laughs> That's not the way I saw her growing up, but that movie. Yeah, you know, I mean, Marissa Tomei, I mean, she's got a good part, but I mean, it's hard to, you know, see her part compared to, you know, Mickey Rourke. Just, right. He steals the movie. Like, oh, it's he his won movie. awards for that, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had to have. It's his movie, and if anyone knows Darren Aronofsky or however we're going to pronounce it, you know it you're now, getting <laughs> a dark movie. You're getting a dark, depressing movie, and you're but getting. Wasn't that loosely based on Jack Roberts, though? Jake the Snake? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I thought it was. Mm -hmm. No. I thought it was. Right, Which right. he's actually got a really good documentary on. I've seen now. that on Netflix. Yeah. I think it's just the old, like, old school 70s, 80s wrestlers that try to keep up with the new wave. That's yeah. the whole idea of this movie. People like Jake the Snake, people like Iron Sheik, things like that, whose life went to shit and suddenly were trying to actually make their lives better. Yeah, you went to, you had, you know, you had all this fame, you had all this <laughs> to do it on drugs you blew it on alcohol you blew it on ruining your life i mean you could go down the line of people jake the snake iron Sheik, scott hall all these people they destroyed their lives with drugs and alcohol um and roids because in the 80s and 90s wrestlers were rock stars oh, like yeah, they we're, were what was, they were what real was life his, superheroes was his, uh, there was the scene in that movie where he's like the video game with the with the kid or whatever yeah and mm -hmm. he can like actually you know i think they're in a in a trailer park mm -hmm. you know and i mean he's he's rock bottom and he can play still again. play as himself yeah, yeah. put I the, mean, the ram down to remind yeah. you that you know you were something at one time oh yeah right. um my number three uh sorry most of these are probably comedies besides that one but uh <laughs> happy gilmore um it's a great movie Dear God, if God, you it's one of the funniest movies. The bro. price is wrong, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> I think it would have. That's still doubt. one of the greatest lines. I think without a doubt, Sam, Sandler's best movie. It is close to Sandler's best movie. I would have to give the nods to Little Nicky. I just, I love Little Nicky. <laughs> Little Nicky was funny. I don't think he can touch Happy though, Mr. bro. Mr. Deeds. Uh, Mr. Deeds. I mean, it's good. Mr. Deeds is a remake though, too. Yeah. So. Is Mr. Deeds a remake? Happy though, bro. Too. But <laughs> Happy. Happy's got everything from like portable lines to shoot a McGowan. To, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Even, Dude, what, what does he say? The the guy with the big the big. The guy got the nail on his head. Yeah. God, he's like. I had, to, I had to knock the ball off Frank. Yeah, yeah Frank was over there. there. Yeah. So you can play it where it lands. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, shoot and it. Like, Ooh. Dude, I got it. Carl Weathers. What was it? What was his character's name? Uh, he um, he'd lost his hand to an alligator or whatever. Uh. God, what was Carl Weathers? Ha name? Was it Happy? No, no, no. no his name was Happy. Um, it was. Uh, uh, it's a hall. Uh, anyway, well, like Carl Weathers was awesome in it. We need to find Carl Weathers' name. Yeah, that. Stevie, the Google guy with the yeah. beard. Um, uh, Carl Weathers' yeah. act uh, name in uh, Happy New Year. God, God, I can't remember. I, 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 I would have told you that like two days that, ago if I thought about that it. Has, when uh, what's the kid from? Uh, is it UCF in Central Florida? The yeah, kid, with the one arm. The kid with yeah, the, yeah. Went, you know, he dominated. He the dominated. Combine. And God, all, of, sudden, all of a sudden, Carl Weathers' character is coming back. As Thank a you man. for ha we have right. research people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> but he benched. Did you see what? He benched. Oh, his effort is um, insane. Was it 20 reps or something like that? No, he's more than that. It's like 30 something. That was insane. I think he's got, he should be getting close to getting pulled up. But so. that, I got it. 
Chubbs. 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 Yeah. Yes, Chubbs. Chubbs. Thank yeah. you. All right, uh, so there we go. That Sorry, movie man. is just I. God, and then my next movie. I mean, I really hate golf, and <laughs> okay. I really do. But it may be the greatest comedy cast ever put on no screen. I know where he's going. <laughs> Caddyshack. Yes. Uh, and, uh, if One of the funniest can, movies ever. If you can put a better cast of comedic characters on screen, I want to watch that movie. And you don't even have to say a lot about that movie. It's just like everybody knows Caddyshack. Like it's. But I mean, that's it. I mean, I want to see a movie that has a better comedy cast of characters in it. And if you ever make that movie, I'm I'm there day one. I'm there like waiting in line. Like I don't think that's one of those. Been. That's basically you took Saturday Night Live and made a movie. That's yeah. what that movie was. I don't think they they've were ever been executed as well. Yeah, yeah, they were able to execute everything. Everyone yeah, meshed. They flowed. Right, right. Everyone meshed really well. They were able to you know put in enough of the sports aspect to make you feel like you know it's semi sports movie. And an honorable mention that you know. Um, I kind of didn't even want to mention, but this is a guilty pleasure of back to guilty pleasure movies. But this is an honorable mention for sports movies. Uh, Ready to rumble. Ready to rumble. David (laughs) Arquette WCW movie. Oh my god! If David Arquette's head. It was back when WCW was very popular. They actually branched out into a comedy movie. Had David Arquette. It's actually hilarious. If anyone grew up in that. In the, the late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, right. wrestling. If everyone history. grew up in that era of watching wrestling, then it was. yes, it's it a was. terrible bat. It's a terrible movie, but it's an honorable mention as a guilty pleasure because I will go out of my way to watch that movie. But with that, uh, I can't compare to this man's list. Um, Nobody can. <laughs> I enjoy sports movies. Um, he just rocked it out with sports he movies, just, though, bro. He walked the floor with us on sports movies, and <laughs> I brought in a bunch of comedy. Maybe we should let him go last. Yeah. <laughs> y'all, y'all set the bar really high. So yeah. <laughs> the bar is hey, up this, here. This I'm, man's been preparing I'm, to rip our I'm, face I'm, off. Yeah. Uh, Hundred subscribers. Oh God. Get ready. I mean, so anybody needs to watch this. Needs to. I mean, he killed it. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of great sports movies out there. I'm not going out of my way to really see a sports movie. It's not my particular genre that I really, really care about. Well, the Wrestler. The yeah, Wrestler, I mean... Yeah. There's so many. I mean, Darren Aronofsky, just every movie he really does is really good. And, I mean, Requiem for a Dream, uh, Pala. Uh, um, Gone Girl. Gone Girl. Um, Black Swan, which could technically be considered a sports movie if you consider ballet a sports movie, which would then be... Some way it dances, I don't know. Which, <laughs> then that I could think have it's been more in, arts, but... <laughs> then that could have been in my top because Black Swan's an amazing movie. Um, but with all of that, I'm going to stop uh, bullshitting and I'm pass it on to got, buddy? Brad. Oh, Lord. Um, I'm going to actually... I'm going to go ahead and start from the top like he did. My number one that I honestly can't believe hasn't been mentioned is Rudy. It, we've all at some point in our life felt like we felt like we were the kid that was that no matter we still wanted something but we weren't good enough we weren't rich enough we weren't you know strong enough so everybody's felt what Rudy felt but yet he still wanted to play for Notre Dame that was his dream and that's really what got to me with that movie is he pushed and pushed and pushed until he got his what 10 seconds, one play, yeah. just for his dad to be able to see him in a Notre Dame uniform on the field. I think him just running out of the tunnel was the victory. Yeah, I mean, and I, I mean, think the icing on the cake was when he got when they put him the in the play. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad for anyone who wants to play for Notre Dame, but just <laughs> no, made, back then it meant something. Oh, yeah, back then it meant something. That, back then you didn't have to have a fake girlfriend to play for Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> that movie and the first House of Pain album. Oh, yeah. Shake mine and Stevie Max teenage years, I'm telling you. <laughs> my, my, my number two shake My number two, um I didn't play sports, but most of my friends were on the football team at Science so, and you know, it's everybody I hung out with. So I'm going with varsity blues, like that's how it was. At I went to a school where, you know, if you played football, somehow you got an A, even though you were probably an idiot. <laughs> you know, you you got perks. That's how it was, you know, growing up in a small town with where football is a big thing. Same thing with Friday Night Lights. And you got away with shit you probably shouldn't have got away with. Number three, 
Necessary Roughness, probably the single best football comedy ever made. Wait a minute, is that Scott Bakula? Scott Bakula. That was a great movie. Necessary Roughness. Um, Never mind, I'm thinking the one with Keanu Reeves. That was the replacements. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Bakula was the one, the or Scott Bakula was in it. He was the the washed up quarterback. They got to come back to school to get another degree just to get him to play quarterback. Um, had that eligibility left. You got the so- you got the female soccer player to come in to be the kicker because she could kick like a seventy yard field goal. A Kathy Ireland. Yes, sports, it was Kathy sports, Ireland. Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover model. That, damn, this dude's still just knocking. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> that movie, this dude's a damn ringer. Yeah, what the and, hell? Cut yeah, it so we, I promise you, we didn't pay this. <laughs> this is not some ringer we found from the internet. This is Jeff Brock. <laughs> and, <laughs> and number four for the big four sports is baseball, football, basketball, and um, I'd say hockey, maybe the big four. Right. But for me, baseball is the top sport. Like right. That's what I grew up loving. So the greatest baseball movie ever made, I'm not going to say Major League. I know that's what I'm Kevin Costner, Bull Durham. Um, mm. Classic. Okay. You, everybody takes Major League as good as it is as your basic baseball comedy, but Bull Durham... Took that that whole comedy level and stepped it up. It wasn't slapstick; like right. it was just pure. Like this is what it's like being a minor league player trying to make it to the majors. And the, the cast was phenomenal. That's actually probably my favorite Kevin Costner movie ever. Is Bull Durham? I love slapstick comedy, so I love slapstick comedy, but Bull Durham it had more realism in it. Like yeah. this guy knew he was only making, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year, but his whole dream was to make it to the majors and he was willing to do anything to do that. Even sleep on a yellow, you know, the yellow banana school bus right. and the <laughs> you know, in the middle of dead of winter just to make it to a game that he thought he was the game that he was gonna be the celebrity right. at. I actually used channel a little bit of bull during because Winning the contest and stuff, I was a little nervous, but I remembered to breathe through my left eyelid. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'm wearing a pair of Gordon. God, I want to wa- <laughs> watch, like, watch that movie so, again. Like, I haven't watched it in a while, and I, was, I started thinking exactly. about, like, you know, the ones that people normally don't mention. I was like, oh, God, Bull Durham, you never actually seen me mention that, but it was such a good movie. Very underrated. Yeah. No, like, great movie. The younger Susan Sarandon, she was... She was yeah. Just, Flawless. Flawless. I think after that movie, her and uh, Tim Robbins, you know, because he was just starting his career. Out. Yeah. Her and Tim Robbins end up getting married. I think they're still together to That's this day. Like, yeah. Together, yeah and kids and stuff. So. Awesome. That's y'all have had some great movies. One movie I'm going to mention before I get into my four that nobody's mentioned that I think is one of the rest four movies, but I don't have the guts to put it on my list is Hoosiers. I don't know if y'all have ever seen Hoosiers. Gene Hackman, yeah. Indiana. Another, yeah. another, another one was Basketball Diaries that I really love. I love that. Basketball Diaries, technically, it kind of sort of is a sports movie, but it's kind of that fall from grace, like high school kid that... I definitely consider it a sports that, movie, though. Um, I mean, it's not basketball I've read the diaries. book. Like, I'm a Jim Carroll fan. I'm, yeah. I like his band. I've read the book, movie. So. Look who's in the movie. Wahlberg and DiCaprio. your boy, DiCaprio. So, how can you go wrong? I mean, we didn't one. bring up... Basketball, I mean, this basketball. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Yeah. Uh, Good luck. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to start with my number one, and I'm going to work my way down. Uh, my number one, obviously, which is my number two favorite movie of all time, is Rocky Four. I think, without a doubt, <clears throat> all the Rocky movies are good. There's only one movie that really uh, just captured my heart as a kid. If I ever went to an island and only had one movie to watch <coughs> over and over again, it's Rocky Four. Um, it goes he from does, he does right. <laughs> it goes from this unbeatable character like Rocky. Uh, he loses his friend. Uh, everybody's seen the movie before. He loses his best friend in the world. Um, Rocky is at the lowest point of his life. He lost his friend. This guy killed his friend in the ring, and then his own wife, who's never lied to him, looks him in his eyes and tells him he can't win. So not only that, he's going to fight him in Russia, um, in this guy's backyard with his own wife not behind him. His own wife don't even want him there and tells him he can't win. And not only that, he's killed his own best friend. And it's during the middle of the Cold War when Russia is literally about to nuke us and we're about to nuke them. So it's Russia versus the United States. It's Rocky training out in the snow. He's doing all these things naturally, which he really wasn't. It was a very political motivated uh, movie. <laughs> but he was really... 
he portrays that he's not taking the steroids, but we all know he was. But for the movie's sake, oh, uh, was definitely. He was doing he was doing the right things, and um, I can't say enough good things. My favorite movie of all time. Well, it's the second favorite movie of all time. So of course that's that's my number one sports movie. You're gonna have to do the uh, the what is it? The Creed. They're, I mean, they're coming out with that. Yeah, we're about to get the first Creed. The first Creed was amazing. Yeah, great. I, I love it. I'm not expecting to be able to see that. Stallone's really knowledge better. of movies and how to write and how to script, and how to put people into play, has risen. Um, when we had our guilty pleasures, he was kind of like a punchline from some of his movies, but. No. Fantastic. Uh, <laughs> the limes. Here they come, <laughs> baby. Shower the limes. Stallone's a guy that pulled himself up from We're just having random <laughs> lines thrown <laughs> lines thrown at us, guys. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, my number two is another movie that if I ever went to an island and I was forced to watch this one over and over, it is a comedy, but damn, dude, it's just a damn good movie. It's an enjoyable movie, and that's why men can't jump. It's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's Your just, mama was an astronaut. No, it's <laughs> just like, uh, I mean, like, and I play ball. Everybody here knows, everybody in this building knows that I play basketball, and I was pretty good at basketball and had some offers to some small-time colleges and things, and I, I, I love that movie. Like, I've just watched it over and over and again. Harrison kills, uh, Rosie Perez kills, Snipes kills. The movie's phenomenal. Set out in L.A., the guy come from the East Coast, small colleges, hustling people. Um, great comedy, great script. They nail it on all aspects. It's just a great movie overall. It's probably my number number two uh, favorite sports movie ever. I forgot about that movie. <laughs> my number three, I have to go with Rudy. I mean, that's just I'm I'm you know. Very, very heartfelt movies. It, ever. It, it, here's the thing about it: it's a real movie. It really happened. <coughs> this guy really went through those trials and tribulations, and just grinding in the mill to do this. And you know, he knew that what he wanted to do. Small colleges before went he went to could Holy even Cross. Get, yeah. yeah, small private colleges yeah. before he could even get into Notre Dame. Like doing and everything just he, to be able he, to say he went to Notre he's Dame. He's just begging to go paint the line, begging to paint the lines. He don't even have a home. He just loves Notre Dame football. And I don't give a damn if it's Notre Dame or Navy or Air Force or, you know, Colorado State. If you love the university that much, I respect you, dude. I'm sorry, bro. Like, I respect you. And for him to do what he did. Even those red elephants. That's the only ones I don't. (laughs) That's the only ones I don't. Uh, But for him to show his passion and, and love for what he wanted to do and make it happen and the way he did it, when he ran out on the field, and it's Planet Music, uh, dude. Every hair on my body stood up. The first time I seen that movie. If I go in that living room in there right now and watch that, right. it'll do the same thing. I want to quick and I, Everybody brings up Sean Astin. Obviously, that was his movie. Like he was, what was it? Seven, Daniel Rudebaker. Like was that game to you? <laughs> But honestly, Charles Dutton in that movie as yeah, the you're five you know foot nothing, a hundred and nothing. Yeah, that whole like. Trying to push him to make him try harder, even though he's talking down to him, he's still right. pushing him to say, right. "You're not good enough to be there." But yet, that's what made Rudy want it even more. He did. He went through all that that you were talking about, all the struggle and the hard work, chasing a dream that he he, he wasn't. He didn't know that it was going to happen. He, he thought there was a chance. He was it chasing happen. it blindly. He was hoping for that like small half a percent right. that he could actually do it. And let's call it what it is. He had legit all Americans laying their damn jerseys down saying, if you don't let this man oh, dress out for this game, surround him. Yeah, when he got we're not like, right. when he got cut, that was the like they all walked off like it's not gonna happen. Yeah, right. because yeah. and back he then like scholarships restrictions, they like you just didn't hand those out, bro. Like, <laughs> there's a right. chance you're going in. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Because that was when they really cut back. After, that was, you know, that was after a lot of the Bryant stuff and all that, where he was getting 150 players. Right. That's right when they made those cuts. Right. Is when this movie was portrayed. Like, so yeah, it's, it, it's a great movie. Um, all right, my number four. I've changed it. Um, this one, I had a number four. We had he had to change it on the fly. <laughs> I changed it on the fly, and here's why: because I didn't think about this one, and then it hit me. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm probably one of the biggest college football fans there's ever been. I have a brick in the swamp in Gainesville. Um, okay, sorry. I, I have. <laughs> Peeves, who are you a fan of? Auburn? Alabama. That's embarrassing. <laughs> this is jump on board, man. Uh, but anyways, Second huge Gator fan. Uh, <laughs> it, takes, it, it takes 
a lot of guts, as this man knows, to be a fan of anybody in this state uh, that's not Alabama right now. Or, or Auburn. Uh, well, Auburn, they're going to get thrashed, but I mean, yeah. especially if it's not it's Alabama awesome. or Auburn, like if you're you, a fan of the SEC East, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's really bad right now. We used to dominate. We're at Alabama. least SEC. Though, but like, with that being yeah. said, this movie is portrays college football. This movie is absolutely phenomenal. I let it slide through the cracks earlier, but I thought of it, and it's my number four is The Program. Boom. Yes. That movie, yeah. when it launched, set the world on fire, bro, because it, college football, to me and everybody in the South, is king of kings when it comes to sports. The uh, People base their weddings around college football games. People, <laughs> yeah, they do. people literally will not get married because of that. Right. We they are brothers in this, in this state this year that's going to kill each other with a gun <laughs> over the Alabama and Auburn game. That's real talk. Well, that's that's real, real talk. You want to know something actually modern? We hear Todd Pods, these kids jumping out of cars and dancing. The Internet Challenge, that movie actually got in a lot of trouble for bef- even the days before the internet he's was a to, big he's thing. About to take away from my thunder right here. No. <laughs> You're about to take away from my thunder. The kids, right when they lay out in the middle of the street, That's that started the whole internet challenge type thing. That that scene that he's talking about was my next point. They actually Sorry. laid down in the middle of the street in the original cut and was like basically showing that they're fearless, they don't give a shit, we're going to do this, it don't matter, and they laid down in the middle of the lines as the cars was going each way. Because they were fearless. Um, that scene later got cut out because people started trying that, just yeah. like you said, and people started dying left and right. That's a great choice. But you, I remember yeah. when you yeah. actually watch yeah. it, you're right. sitting there in the theater, yeah, and that scene, great. and you're like, holy shit, these kids are about to get hit. Like, you're on edge. But on the under, on the underlining of the movie, you see all the glitch and glamour. It shows and it portrays actual real college football because right. Bright and Stevie... And I'm sure you guys are too, but I know we are for sure. I grew up with Cadillac Williams. I grew up with Reggie Worthy. I grew up with several guys that's played college football. Todd Malone. Malone. So this, the stuff you're seeing on the underlining, the hundred dollar handshakes, the the pressure on performance, and all these things, that's real in that movie, and that's really how these guys are. I mean, you're like on a, a you're on a stage. You're magnify anything you do. Outside of the field, in the field, it don't matter. In the classroom, you, there's a microscopes on you, right. and it portrays all that, and it shows the pressures of somebody trying to run for the Heisman and Joe Kane, and and how it's just like so taken from a drunken home, bad, battered dad. You know what I'm saying? It's like treating them like shit, but it shows the pressure, and it build and build and build until he finally broke. Right, and then you got somebody like Latimer who is. This white dude who's worked his ass off from from special teams, and he finally got on the juice like the wrestler, like like, like the wrestler like we really? talked about earlier. Uh, he got on the juice, and it got him to the level to where he could perform like mad yeah. at him. But he got caught, so then they take him off the juice, and all his Superman powers are gone away. But yeah, that's so to me the most realistic part of that. Like tonight, we're going live on this, right? And, and we're hoping that everybody watches. Checks it out on YouTube and, and, and everything, but social media has become so huge. Right. There's the there's a scene there's a where kids. there's a scene where where the kid you know the running back um, yeah. is being recruited. Darnell Jefferson. Yeah, Darnell. Yeah, he's being recruited and he goes and they've got the cheerleaders and the the pet mm-hmm. squad and everybody, all the students and everything's just like rah, you know it's rah rah and everybody's there mm-hmm. to turn out to get him to sign on the dotted line and then when he signs. <laughs> He comes back to college. And same bus. Out, same bus. He steps <laughs> off that bus again, and there's not a there's soul, not a soul there. there. See, that's the thing. There's so much pressure on it. kids right now yeah. in sports. The program's a good example. Um, I'll throw an honorable mention out. If you want to throw one, out, if we want to throw one out, since he did throw one, a fifth movie. My honorable mention that made me think would be there was a movie come out with Shaq. Right around the time, oh, it was hell yeah, blue, blue chips, chips. Yeah. and especially blue now where we see people paying for blue chip players, right. no matter the sport, actually paying these kids to get them in. And we're from Gaston. That was a huge controversy with Alabama and Gene Jelks. Everybody around here knows that story. Now I that that, that kind of pressure on getting people to come to your school, right. or to actually you know even go straight and go straight to pro, and we're putting that pressure on kids now that we're offering them millions of dollars just because we want their physical ability instead of 
actually giving them a chance to develop and grow. Right. I've got a quick question. At what point in time should we start playing college players? Paying college players. They already should. They already, they already do. I think in some way, I think in some ways legally it should be done right now. The they're giving up being able to work a job to help pay for their tuition. Yes, their tuition usually is free. It's scholarship. Right. But they're having to give up the t- their social time because they're basically treated like NFL players now. They're having to do press conferences like SEC Media Days is right now, or is it last week? Or last something. week. Yeah, it's going on, and they're acting like they're already pro players. Right. Let's, even if it's you know a couple hundred bucks a week for them to actually have meals and stuff and actually go out with their I friends think, and not all. I think I think that's the key is the going out and stuff. Their their housing's provided for. Let them actually have a normal life. They're all, still kids. All, all that stuff is provided for, but there's going to be kids on that team that come from a from a good family. That's where you got, had both parents really putting their nose to the grindstone and working. Give hard. you a. A credit card for you. Yeah, making problem. sure that you ha- you know you go to you got a car when you go to campus. They're doing everything that they can do, and there's going to be some of those kids that the only reason they're there is their athletic ability. Nobody cares about me because they're from and the projects. They, they they have their they have their meals paid for, their their housing, all that stuff. But then you know there's the weekends and stuff like that. You want to go to the you know this is a real and a beer. It's expensive to go to a movie nowadays. You know, oh, and yeah. if you're a college student and you want to take a, you meet a girl, you want to take her out on a date you know and stuff I mean, like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's and they practice else. so much they can't actually work yeah, a, can't. a part-time job or any right. kind of job while they're also having to deal with classes as well. I got a point. Uh, why do why do why do they have such a problem with them actually? You know, signing merch for. You know, a Todd Gurley, remember? Yeah. The, the one reason of the, one of the great Georgia players. I mean, the reason being is the. Um, oh, do you want the real reason or the storybook go. reason? I the real reason is because the college is not getting the money for it. Yeah, exactly. That's the real reason. I mean, I'd be fine. Uh, with the state's it. not giving money because I'd, I'd but, be fine with the college getting a cut of it, but give the kids a cut of it. We, too. Did, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. We're gonna wrap this one up. It's ran a little bit long, but uh, to your point about paying players, the argument is we got to pay this, the, the the girls' volleyball team the same amount. We got to pay that. My rebuttal to that is let's do it by the percentage you bring in. I agree with that. Let's do it by the percentage yeah. you bring in. The football team brings in the most. Obviously, they should get the most. Second, basketball. Third, uh, baseball. And then, you, and then you have certain right. colleges, where say Kentucky. Where the basketball, basketball players on Macle or Duke or something like that, where the basketball players they get the the higher pay, right. right? And that that's how it should be done, in my opinion. Um, what you said though, it goes to the colleges can't regulate um, because it's just the guy signing it. That's why when the ones announced that they can sign, that's why you see the people like at Flowers by Rita and Gas, and then when they yeah. have people who's still in college that show up is that reason, guys. I'm blown away. Jeff Bright didn't deliver. He Jeff, kicked our asses. <laughs> Jeff Guy come in here and he took this over, bro. Like I'm I can't say enough good things about Jeff and Stevie for showing up, bro. Like thank you guys. Um we got a cheer squad right now outside. Uh, so yeah. I think Jeff's Jeff season, bro, like see he's like he came in here and just took it over like Debo. Yeah. He's like, it's my shit now, bro. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was really nervous. I don't think you are now, from, bro. No, for, I mean from the moment. From the moment we got here, he been, saw the camera and he kind of no, got. No, this guy right here, he's been he's been the best host. I mean, just and and all y'all, you know, y'all been y'all been great. Appreciate so it, bro. No, we appreciate been, you, really, man. It's been an awesome experience. You know why? You know we why? What he's you, saying, man. this is honest to God truth, man. Because that is what we want to portray on the show. We want to portray. We want that open environment. You want to come and like hang out with these dudes and drink beer with them and talk about movies. Right. That's what that's what we're trying to betray, yeah, and I honestly think that's why we've been successful to this point. Yeah, it's because um, we're hitting on all cylinders with that. In my dude, opinion, this dude has been fucking phenomenal. I think he blew <laughs> us out of the water on his movie page. Well, no, we all had to follow that, and we didn't want to follow yeah, that. Uh, I mean, I had the privilege to have followed it first, and I kind of like, <laughs> privilege oh, or you know, yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, yeah I was right. unfortunate <laughs> enough to follow it first. But I mean, he came in. He was on his A game. Like you said, he may have been nervous. But you know, once once you get used to it, once the you get the bit. alcohol, or it's not even that. I mean, it's the great like, confidence builder right here. Yeah. <laughs> Liquid <laughs> courage, man. Like he, I mean, I must hell. say that was I mean, that was a plus on point. Um, yeah. He's great. been he's been a great guest. Um, we got more stuff we're going to film. Thank you for coming in. And yeah. I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. To Hopefully you guys can stay around awesome. for a little bit more. Uh, Bradley, got anything before we close out? 
Uh, just hit the subscribe button, little button down on the, under the video. Hit the bell to make sure you get notifications. If you have any feedback, comment, what are your, some of your favorite sports movies? Like, Please tell we, us in the comments. We sat around and brainstormed outside this, and we mentioned a bunch that we actually didn't mention tonight, so we want to hear what you guys think. Absolutely. Um, with that being said, we're going to close this video out. Uh, once again, thanks, Jeff. Thank you so much. Thank all of you guys. Uh, Jeff, thank you especially for coming in. Thank Stevie, you, Danny, everybody. We're going to close out. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. And <laughs> a reel in a beer, baby. <laughs> reel in a beer.